All right, welcome back to the PDR Coach Podcast. Today on the podcast, some of you may have heard of him by now, but for those that haven't, um, we have Don Kavanaugh on the podcast. Um, if you haven't heard of him, here's a quick rundown. He got into PDR at in 1989, may have been the first technician in the US, or if he wasn't the first, he was gone close. And he's had actually a shop for almost as long as that. So right after he started in 89, um, he runs Dent Craft in Minnesota, and he's a phenomenal technician and businessman. But nowadays, he's focusing more on helping move the PDR industry forward than on actually repairing dents. And uh, we're going to talk about both, so, both of those things today. So welcome to the show, Don. What's up, man? Oh, thanks. An honor to be here, man. Appreciate it. Love Super watching exciting. your journey too, man. It's uh, awesome to be on your show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously, I followed you and looked up to you and what you've done in the industry and, and with your shop and, and all those things. So it's I appreciate you saying that. Um, just trying to do my part. Thanks, you know? man. <laughs> yeah, you are by far. So my favorite question to ask, especially for you, 1989. Uh, how did you, how did you find this weird little niche that we're in? Well, it's it's uh, I was working. I got out. Of, I was went to college. I'll start kind of a little there you go. back. I, I got into a technical college, went out into your area and uh, mm -hmm. got into underwater welding, demolition, that type of thing. And realized real quickly, I, I really wanted to work with my hands. I knew that early on in life, found out a quick journey that that was not for me. And uh, to speed it up to uh, uh, getting back here to Minnesota with my tail between my legs and and broke and owing money to uh, student loans and things, I basically, um, I went to work. I'm always been a car guy. Even in high school, I worked okay, I gotta at car ask dealerships. Real quick, when, yeah. What year was that? When you finished college, went back to Minnesota? It was like 84. Okay. 85? So se several years before you. Yes. So it was just a two year AS degree. So okay. basically I, um, I, I got back, I got a job at Sears and Ported Autos, which everybody thinks at Sears and Roebuck, but the guy's name was Don Sears and uh, they had Mercedes Benz, BMW, Rolls Royce and Peugeot. That Peugeot was a really a, anomaly all these really expensive cars and then the Peugeot was yeah. kind of we called it Peugeot back then <laughs> but uh this guy came in and uh he wanted to do paintless dent repair and his name was Jurgen Holzer and he had learned that trade in the BMW factory in uh, Munich in the 60s and 70s so it's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of a cool thing Randy Hobson good friend of mine he did an interview on PDR interviews with him so if you guys want to learn yeah. a little bit about Jurgen go back and check that one out that'd I wish cool. I could tell you what episode that was but you'll find it I'll try to look that up and put it in the show notes because that'd be that'd be cool that might be kind of cool for people either. to yeah. see so I saw him doing it and he said there's no way I'm going to train anybody and I was kind of like right away when I saw him I I helped him actually get into the dealership too which was really kind of fun because he was telling me I do paintless dent repair and I was a service writer there and I said, uh, buddy, we have a body shop. I didn't get it myself. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like what? Like but everybody hit the road, bud, yeah. you know, and, uh, and he had to be careful because he had a Mercedes and every other time he came in, uh, he actually had something to do or he was pitching his business. So it was like, come on, come on, come on. So, but then one day he said, can you come out to my car? And he pulled his hammer out and he put a dent in his door and boy, did he get my attention. I was like, what the hell, you know, and then I saw it, I loved it. And I started slowly setting him up, you know, job after job. And then the body shop was mad at me that they didn't want to talk to me. You know, like you're taking money out of our pocket, just like we all have dealt with and oh, yeah, the, sure. the old guys, you know, and uh, basically it, it went on from there. And I asked him if he trained me and he said, no. So I thought, you know, I started watching him a little bit and, and I started making my own tools and that was like 89 and I struggled for a few years and it's just terribly so and uh so, so you were still I, writing and then also I was, trying to figure was, out how to yeah. move metal on the side yeah yep okay. i was doing it at night i was yeah. doing weekends i was doing friends cars all this stuff literally zero guidance like you just saw zero. him fix one dent in his mercedes door and you're like yep. oh, i could do that shit like everybody else thinks like that's easy. well then every time you'd come in you know i'd be over his shoulder yeah, right yeah, okay like this is like 87 or 88 yeah. something like that and i'm okay. like god i think i i think i could do that i was always one of those guys that you know could do what i like i could to weld do. i could weld ships underwater i could move metal <laughs> I around think i can do this <laughs> but i'll tell you it was much harder than welding i'll tell you what and uh topside or underwater <laughs> but it was really fun and and uh, so i just tried it and tried it and i just didn't do very well mm -hmm. and then 89 he fi or excuse me 91 he finally said okay i'll i'll, I'll train you you yeah. know so 
uh, that's when things started getting a little better for me and started taking off and, and uh, doing a little bit better and sort of making a little bit more money at it. And That's even awesome. at, even before 91 though, I was doing fairly decent at it mm -hmm. with, uh, with the money, but not the quality <laughs> quality yeah. wasn't there. Right. Yeah. I mean so. the quality. Yeah. I mean, my, again, my dad started in 91 also. So I hear stories from back then. I mean, quality wasn't as necessary as it was now, because just the fact that you could do what you're doing was amazing enough. You know, yes. it was like yes. you go to a dealership or body shop and, or probably not body shops really much back then, but dealerships or customers houses. And you're like, I could fix that without painting it. Even if it was 90%, I can make it yeah. flattish without painting it. They're like, exactly sold. Yeah. yeah done. That's pretty cool. Done. Yeah. yeah. So you've had a shop too. Cause I mean, there's a lot of guys now, like, especially over the last maybe three or five years, more and more and more shops. I think that continues down the road. Um, you've had a shop for almost as long as you've been doing PDR since the early nineties. And, and you've actually gone back and forth with Daniel Grom from the West coast out here in Santa Rosa and a couple, maybe a couple of people, like maybe the longest running solely PDR shop in the country, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 No, that is, that is, that is pretty cool. And I, uh, I just, just love it. I didn't know that, uh, people have told me that, but, yeah. but recently I have heard from, uh, again, Randy, um, that he had just bought the dent squad. Right. Mm. And, uh, that was evidently like the 89 ish too. So mm. he's right in there. As get well. down to the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, cool. so cool talk stuff. a little bit about that. Why a shop? How did you have, how many times have you moved shops? Like, you know, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I've time? had, uh, I think I've had six or seven shops. I was just trying to figure this out a few weeks ago. I'm starting to write a, actually write a book and, uh, about this or about PDR, like memoirs about PDR, just, okay, just, nice. you know, just about PDR from the for infant days all the way up and what I've learned okay, and what that's awesome. all the different, all the different uh, categories and, that's and things cool. like that. And it's, it's just really, really been fun and really eye-opening and I'm remembering things that I had once forgotten and, yeah. and uh, you know, all those days. So it's, uh, it's super fun. It's probably, you know, one of those things you start a book and you never finish it. So, but uh, so there's no promises on that one, but uh, it's we just get a, a date fun for thing. release. Please. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. If you were my client, I'd make you put a date on it and hold you accountable yeah, to it. You bet. You bet. I really do want to shoot for 22 though, for sure. All right, there you go. Yeah. 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 So, but it's, uh, it's been fun. It's been a great journey. Six or seven shops probably yeah. by now always had a shop. Even at the beginning, I felt like I needed a shop because I wasn't very good. I wanted to take on larger dings and dents that I probably should have been doing, mm -hmm. but I felt like if it didn't scare the hell out of me, I wasn't pushing myself. Dude, and that's so true though. For anybody listening, isn't it? I've told that to my clients. I've told that to new guys. Like, Absolutely. How many, when was the last time you failed on a debt? They're like, oh, I don't ever fail on debt. So I'm like, you're not getting any better. You're dude. not pushing yourself <laughs> not pushing hard yourself. enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Every exactly. once in a while you got to be like, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, you could set it up, right. If it's a real customer, you can tell them like, especially if you're, you're already Absolutely. good, like, Hey, this is pushing the limits. Right. I'm going to try nothing it. to lose. If I fail, gain. I won't charge you. You know, it's my, my own personal gain. And I did one two weeks ago in that exact situation. And you know what? Four hours in, I'm like, nope, not going to happen. <laughs> Do but you learned years, from that, but I right? From it. You yeah. did. You did. I'm like, Absolutely. man, if I can go back to push one on that, I uh -huh. may have been able to fix it if I'd done this a little bit different. That's right. That's right. Um, I think we always learn. And, and that's, that's the funny. same thing in dent repair and business too. <laughs> I mean, that's Absolutely. why I do what I do. Cause if I can avoid <laughs> that, if I can teach people how to push right from mm -hmm. day one in their business or, you know, push one on their dent, then, then we're good. Right. No, you're so right about that. Um, tell right. me, you told me, we were talking the other day and you told me about um, you trying to fix and push harder, you know, push yourself and how Jurgen, the, your, trainer at the time was like, dude, stop it. Right. Yeah. So tell us yeah. how, how that worked and where, and, and, and when you're done with that, tell us where that like mindset came from to like always constantly try to do that. Cause you're still doing it today and we'll get into that later, but yeah. Yeah. So, so basically um, he had this thing, he said, he said, never do anything bigger than the size of your hand, like the palm mm -hmm. of your hand, because mm -hmm. uh, that just is where the, the money is. You can get in and out you can do more per day for yourself. Per hour, you, yeah. can, uh, you can make those dents generally look really, really good. Sure. And anything deeper or larger or, you know, stay away from body lines, do, you know, just, just do the flat areas. You know, there's plenty out there to pick from, yeah. you know, pick and choose and, and do what you do. And, and I, I just, I'm not built that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he had, um, 
he had a bunch of dealerships and he had a shop as well. So I kept mine open while I went to training with him, but I basically um, would start taking on bigger and bigger dings and dents. And, and I remember this football size dent, we were talking about this the other day yeah. is uh, it was on one of those old sables, you know, the, the funny outward uh, sables. And it wasn't up top, like, like we, those are nightmares that we yeah. all remember us old farts, but I was going to say, um, yeah, some of the guys are like, I don't even, I've never worked on a sable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So they basically were like a, kind of like a, a shapely woman basically had these really, curves, you know, yeah. yeah. Curves. Right. And, and, but anyway, this bottom of this door was crushed pretty darn good. And it was about a football size and it showed up and Jurgen was like, he was there before me and, uh, and, and the customer was really early and it was before eight o'clock and he said, well, we don't, we're not working on that. You know, get, get, you know, come on, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's here for me. Yeah. And he kind of rolled his eyes and okay. And, and it goes down know, again. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, it's probably one of the first ones that he was like, what? And so, um, you know, I had it for like two, three days. I remember working on it all day and the moral of the story was he went off. I stayed at the shop and he was knocking out all these dealerships and coming back with some good bankroll. And uh, here I am laying on the ground, working on this damn dent and longer and longer. So I told you, man, no, don't, don't do that. You know, don't, it, there's no money in that there. You can't do it. And I'm like, you're going to, I really believe that if we can remove a smaller dent, why couldn't we remove a bigger dent? Why, you know, well, God, it goes through that body line. It's a soft body line, but just don't, I'm like, no, I, it's coming. It's, it really is. So at the end of about two, three days, I don't remember exactly. It came out great and I lost my ass. I think I, you know, I was charged the guy 150, 200 bucks, 300 yeah. bucks, maybe. I don't remember that long ago, but it wasn't about the money. It was more about making that happen. You know, Mobile Tech RX today would be, you know, $1,800. Yeah, or for sure. And you have the door like off that. on the stand. You wouldn't oh, be for on the sure. ground. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, and of course, I've drilled a hole in the door and, you know, you know I'm going three quarters, it. three quarters, right? Big, <laughs> no, big, it was the half. <laughs> That was five inch hole. Yeah. I mean, those are the, those are the times that, like, those are the things that like for now, right. Can you like imagine where we are now, what we can fix, right. The tools that we have, but Blows those things mind. don't happen unless there's people like you and many, many people around that time in the nineties or whatever that were like, we can fix more than just th two or three inch dents. Right. And the more times right. you fix them and you're like, then you spend two days, on a car that you make a couple hundred bucks for. And you're like, okay, how can I, then you start asking the questions, which these questions would never enter our mind until we put ourselves in that position. True. Right. True. How do I push this dent faster? Some of the solutions for me back in the, back when I was pushing in the early two thousands was like, you know, tape a tennis ball to the end of a tool because it was a big soft push. Right. Those were yeah. the, the, like the caveman style um, right. solutions. But now it's like, you have to put yourself in those, uncomfortable situations the situations where people are looking at you telling you like you can't do this like you're not supposed to do this, this is not how it's done so that you can create innovation and create new ideas and the same thing goes for your personal life and your business and everything all the people that say like oh i can't run sure. a you know whatever it is i can't run a 5k 10k marathon whatever right you say sign can't, up for you, it. you can't yeah sign up for it do it and then in the process of doing that you're going to realize what you need to do in order to accomplish that same thing Absolutely. with dent repair, well just to said. make an analogy to life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, you're, you're trained, you know, the student has surpassed the teacher after that dent and the guy's like, <laughs> okay, well, maybe not in dollars, but in um, right. potential yeah, yeah, yeah. of what the sure, industry sure. can be. Right. Yeah. So there's a big gap there. We're like mid nineties now. And so what happens from there? How do you become, you know, this, you know, guy that a lot of people know you as like a leader of our industry, you know, one of the best technicians there is like, you know, oh, Facebook uh, lives. Well, I mean, people follow you. They see your work. They see the stuff that I saw that BMW uh, right front door on the body line that you did. I'm like, that is nasty. I think it was BMW. That was a, that was a nasty. That I blew that. That was aluminum. That was that, that coupe, you know, that. A, it was uh, like a black door. Uh, up yeah. High. You blew it? Just a smash. Mean? Yeah, I blew it. I didn't realize it was aluminum, right? Oh, oh you blew it on the price. I was so quick. I didn't yeah. put a magnet on it. Right, yeah. Like, Damn it. You know, it was but still I mean, like an $800 dent, but it yeah. should have been with Mobile Tech RX with aluminum. Right. That one little click would have been 1600 you know? Yeah. So, I mean, people, 
people see you as that. Where where's that? Like where does that fall in? Like what were you going to mobile tech expos? Were you talking to the people? Like how did you become who you are? Like people kind of see you as today. I like that journey part because people forget yeah. that. Yeah that it's not just like, oh, Don Cavanaugh, yeah, he's a great tech and he has a shop and he's like does stuff at MTE and all those things. But like, where, how'd you get there? You know, just really one foot in front of the other, just like, you know, you are, I'm watching your journey and I just, you know, you're, you're one of the younger guys that's building this industry up and it's never about today. You know, it's about mm -hmm. that last dent you did or, or whatever, but I've always been a firm believer and it's been, you know, the way I've been born and raised and stuff, but it's, it's more, and as corny as that might sound, but it's always about helping and pushing and, and by helping, um, you know, other people bring them up that kind of helps you in the long run. And it's, it's interesting, but as far as like, you know, taking on the bigger smashes and stuff, it's just, you know, there's one thing that's never going to be on my tombstone. It's going to be gravy picker. I, uh, I take on the worst freaking smashes there are. I can't wait to do it. Uh, it turns beyond when someone comes to us and says, Oh, two or three companies have turned this down. They say it can't be done. I'm like, bring it in. You're like, All let's right, go, no, let's go, job. let's go. You know? So I'm, I'm probably built, uh, strangely that way, but I just, you know, if you can do something like that, they're the people that really talk about you. You know, if you, yeah. even if you fail, like what you said earlier, I mean, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain because you've told that customer up front. And I used to do it for free too, Corey, you know, if it didn't turn out well, but if now, if I look at it and they've already got a body shop estimate and mm -hmm. I can even tell them before I go in, Hey, you know, this is not going to turn out. I've changed this. This in the last few years. Yeah. It, I think that we can minimize this to the point of, of, you know, your body work's going to be quite a bit less. I'm going to rough it out. You know, this would be an $800 dent. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to charge you half of that $400 and I'm sure you're going to save $800 in your repair. You know, they're going to have very little, you know, sure. filler in there. And I'm talking about not something that, that I look at it, the, the paint's intact. I mean, like unintact, like yeah. scratched and Messed gouged and, and it's got to be painted anyway, you know, it's a different way to go in, but it's amazing how many people come and pick it up. And especially if it's like black or red and I happen to have the color and I'll slap a little bit on there and say, Hey, I'm not painting that. That looks yeah, great. Like good, you know, you're yeah. like, what? You know, not to me, but. So I have this conversation with many people over the years and I try to take all of that, like the explanations and put them down into like a couple of sentences. And so this is what I tell, I tell people, if you can set an expectation for the customer, right. And then deliver on that expectation. Even if you say 80%, whatever you end up telling them, like, Hey, this part will still be buckled. The paint's still going to, whatever, set the expectation and deliver on it then you can charge for it. Right. But if you, Perfect. if you tell the customer, if you're a newer guy, right. And you don't know really what your abilities are. Cause you're 30 years in, I'm 15 years in. I know what I really know. Like, can I get this 80, 90%? Yes or no. Newer sure. guys, they don't, they don't know that really, but you still have to push yourself. So if the customer says, Hey, I want it to be pretty, you know, pretty close to perfect 90%. And you say, yes, I'll do 90%. And you don't deliver on the expectation. You don't get to charge. That's the way right. I see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but your situation, yeah. If you can tell them up front, Hey, here's what you get and you deliver it, charge them all day. But there's going to be times in your PDR career for those of you listening that are newer, that you're going to set an expectation and you're not going to deliver on it. Yeah. That's when you don't get paid. That's yeah. when it's, you get paid in learning experience and not in you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so well, well said, Corey, you, yeah. you nailed that. Cause I can't tell you how many, I bet it's a hundred grand oh, over yeah. the oh. last, you know, uh, 25, 30 years that I've tried stuff that, uh, that yeah. I had no interest or no, I, I had interest of course, but I had no, you know, <laughs> expectations, real, of, expectations <laughs> of trying to do it right, you know, yeah. to maybe save something. So mm -hmm. it's incredible, but with the new technology, it's amazing. You oh, know, yeah. I, I, I train guys, I've trained over probably a hundred, 120 guys and, and it's hard to even remember all of them. And it's, it's interesting how, like you just had this young guy, Zach, uh, that just got just finished up and he just did great. You know, we, we had a, a torso size dent I put in and with all the, all the new technology today, I swear he's at a five-year level Crazy, in, in a month, in a month. That's like, the what? beauty of it though. Like that big we, smashes. We need, we need to accomplish that, right? We need to be able to reduce the amount of time it takes for a guy to get trained. And that's great. Cause yeah. like when you started, my dad started, you know, let's say 1990 until you could glass, you know, three or four inch dents, we're talking like 
five, six, seven, eight years, years, <laughs> because there's no, there was no tool company or maybe there was a tool company, but it wasn't, you couldn't pop. There wasn't, I didn't see a tool company. I didn't see We made yeah. all our own tools. That was so, part of my training. No tool company. Yeah. I was making tools in the garage of fucking when yeah, I was a teenager yeah. with my dad. <laughs> no yep. tool companies, yep, exactly. no coaches, no podcasts, no, this guy came before no you, none of that stuff. Yeah. None of that stuff. And so now like guys like you, and I didn't even mention that. I feel kind of bad. The dent craft for your trainer. Obviously you've trained a bunch of guys. That's another yeah. big part of what you do out of your shop too. Um, but um, yeah, we're reducing that time what it takes. You know, you and my dad took, you know, seven, eight years. I started yeah. learning in the early two thousands and it probably, my kid's like knocking on the door. I'm it sorry. probably took it. <laughs> it's my dog's no, it's my, my kid. I'll quiet my three year old oh, banging on the door. My dogs at the same time. My son just got up. <laughs> um, <laughs> excited to see him. It took me probably, you know, three, four years to get good. My dad was, you know, decent trainer, but it was more like hands on watching type of thing. Sure. Right. I've trained people kind of follow me around a couple years, but now people are coming out of training. Like I, the, the stuff, some guys I've seen that are a year in, I'm like, that is not fair. <laughs> I'm like, away, that is ridiculous. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It took Where was so I? Long. What? Yeah, uh-huh. but that's like the progression of our industry, and that's a good thing. It's, it means our industry is moving forward, and if we can get to a point where we can train guys legitimately for in six months, like that could transform the way we do it's, business in our industry. It, it's absolutely fantastic. crazy. I mean, yeah. when I saw the first knockdown, Corey, I was blown away. The first knockdown. I mean, we were, we were, we were. I was ten years in. I started with a hammer, right? I'm still the hammer guy, right? But yeah, the bl- I mean, blending I, hammers. I, whatever. Yeah, the blending hammers. That's just yeah. how I started, and I didn't know there was any other way. And that's how you're going to train me, and that's how he was trained in the BMW factory. And and so I would start with that first day with like a quarter size dent. By the end of the day, because I couldn't hit anything, it was a freaking <laughs> basketball. Was, you know, yeah, I'm like, make it grow. Yeah. Oh my God, what am I yeah, doing? You know. For so, sure. Yeah, I yeah. I remember the first time in the probably like 2006 or something that I saw my dad tap a dent out. And I was like, what? Like customers are now I'm like d- mm-hmm. you, you hit it on the other side and it came like, just like tapping out crowns essentially is what he was doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, I figured this out, you know, however many years ago that some sure. dents you don't have to like actually push on you. If it's just, open like, in the back, pressure. that's how I would do it. Still do them today. Crazy, like on a hood yeah. or a fender, if I can get my hand in there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, he just, just tapped the crowns only never pushed in oh, the oh, dent. Oh, oh. That's what I'm saying. Like we were talking tap downs. He would just tap out. I see. Dents. I see. Yeah, yeah, release the yeah, pressure yeah. on the crowd, soft right, stuff, right. and the dent will come out without ever pushing on the backside of the panel, right? Sure, Crazy. Sure, I was like mind sure. blown. Like some customers are, they're like, "Why are you, why are you hidden on the car exactly?" <laughs> it seems like the wrong way. <laughs> they still way. do that. Yeah, they right? still like, do that. Yeah. It's just kind of counterintuitive, right? <laughs> like, funny. what are you doing? <laughs> Pretty funny. So I just love saying, "Hey, it's like throwing a rock into a pond. You get those waves that yes. come up, like in the mm-hmm. pond, a, a calm pond. Yeah. And if you push those down the right way and drive those crowns mm-hmm. inward, it's going to, yeah. you know, a lot of times you don't have to make any pokes. Exactly. Oh my gosh, the the analogies, I love it. My dad used to always say this because he used to do training for dent pro guys. He would go to their <laughs> like the uh, yearly get together. It was a big franchise, right? At one point, it was pretty big. There was like hundred guys working." for it, a bunch of different companies. He would one, teach people how to work inverted, like upside down like that, yep, yep. Uh, because most guys didn't do that. And then the other thing he would teach them, he would use this analogy of like a Jiffy Pop popcorn. You ever seen, you ever seen though, you put them on the stove, Yeah, yeah, I've seen them, upside, but I- right? So if you wanted to make the top of that Jiffy Pop flat, right? Would you push one time really hard in the center? Or would you push like a hundred times all around it to make that? That's a great thing? analogy. That's how he would explain how to fix oh, dents. Wow. <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> that one. It's still stuck in my head. Like when I think of hail damage or whatever, it's not like some, a lot of, you know, guy, dent guys go up there, but customers like one push in the center and it all right. comes up. They you have know? no it's idea. It's like a hundred pushes for yes. a little teeny yes. dent. Absolutely. Anyways, that's fun. No, I about. love the analogies. <laughs> They're great. They're great. I like the ripples in the pond one. That's good. You know, yeah, it just makes sense because you yeah. drop that mm-hmm. in and you can see them and the metal has to go force that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, so we were talking the other day. Tell us about um, when you started getting in, you know, this is probably mid early 2000s, you know, maybe closer to 2010 started MTE started coming around. You went to the first MTE Den Olympics. Talk, talk about that experience. And when you started like meeting you know, other dent guys, sure, like partners sure. now, Dave Streen and other people. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I went, I went early on, uh, yeah. I think it was the second or the third, uh, one. Nice. 
And, uh, and I, and I joined, I did the dental lippings that first, it was the first and only time I did it. And it was, uh, back then they did, well, now they're back to it, but they did fenders and doors and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was a, uh, uh, it was funny because what they did was they had these little three inch sticky notes, the, the sticky notes that you use today, you know, the three M post it. Yeah. Yeah. Post it notes. I don't even think they were called that yet, but yeah. (laughs) And, uh, so long ago this was, and they basically had numbers on them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you drew out of a hat and you grabbed your number and you went and found which car you had. And, and, uh, basically I found a really nasty dent underneath my, uh, my little post-it. post-it note and it was right next to a door handle and it was probably about this far away from a door handle and i'm trying to remember what that was i want to say it was a grand prix or something but it was back in the days where the door handle stuck out you know it wasn't flush it was it was actually out and uh so it was uh you know it had the cup of course inside the door for the door handle as well so your hand could yeah. get underneath you it couldn't see shit because it's right next and to I, the door handle no it was shit. it was i could see it and everything but it was like oh this is gonna this is yeah. gonna suck and then i'm um, a hammer guy right i'm not a knockdown guy so tom price was one of the judges and he was walking around and and i knew tom a little bit and i said hey Hey Tom, I got a problem here. I'm I have to hammer it, but I want to hammer it from the front of the door back to this front. It was a front door, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I need to, uh, you know, I need to blend, but I need all these, all these tabs and these 3M things are flying in the breeze and stuff. And I I need to get rid of those because I'm gonna have to lay my arm across sure. about four or five of those. Yeah. You do you mind? Would you put? those all up for me just straight above i don't want to do it i don't want to screw yeah, anything up yeah, here yeah, right, yeah. But just put them up for me you know, with and the evidence. I'll take a look and he pulls them up and I, I already had done quite a bit of the dent you know at this point too and uh he pulls them up and i'm looking at the light and i'm like this isn't even close to fair mine was about that really? big still and all the other ones were about like this oh my god and i thought what the hell and what, this doesn't even seem fair, but of course it was next to that body line of yeah. the inside of the door cup. So it was twice as deep, yeah. twice as tough. All not, that not a strong of an area. Yeah. No, no, no. And I, and I did, I did make it look pretty good. I remember Tom walking up to me like about 10 times and they had a 45 minute uh, uh, time limit on it. And uh, he comes up to me about five minutes left. Hey, Donnie, you got five minutes left. And I said, okay, fine. And so I just kind of blended it out and it actually looked pretty good. I would have probably spent another 10 minutes on it or something um, in the real world. Um, but that was how it was. So I, I looked at it and I was, I was actually pretty happy with it for, for what it was and, and all that stuff. And, and so they moved my thing down and they moved everybody else's down and then everybody went on, along their way and everybody was like, they, they started calling me the hammer man because everyone else was using a tap down. I was the only guy really doing it back the, at yeah. the beginning like that. I'm sure a lot of guys were, they just weren't in the competition that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, we all learned different ways. So that was that. Mm-hmm. And so I basically, um, we watched everybody else get done this and that other thing. And then what had happened the year before, I think it was the second or third year mm-hmm. that whoever won, and I'm sure it wasn't this way at all. It's just tempers flaring. It was a different time. Um, you didn't share anything with anybody. Yeah. We you, can talk about that next. That's interesting. We will, yeah. because this will lead into it really well. Yeah. You know, you're kind of like almost arguing with guys. You didn't want to mm-hmm. show them anything or whatever. So it was really sad to see, but I love the yeah. change of the guard now. Oh yeah. So anyway, they, they, everybody got, got theirs done and everything. And then the year before that, I kind of, I got to come full circle back to that. So what they did was the guy that won it the year before he, one of his buddies was a, uh, one of the judges. And so they said, you know what, um, we're not going to do, we're going to take the human element out of it. And so they had this machine from NASA that they had, they had, they would put it right on the, right on the dent and it would read the highs and the lows and I've never and, heard of this before. Oh my God. It was amazing. And it was crazy because they had, a, they had this sequence. It was like a physics problem. They had all these different numbers yeah, yeah. and they had to go and, and cross reference them all. And, and that was your number, you know, it was like, didn't make any sense to any of us, you know, cause we're looking at, at our eyes, you know, and the guy that actually won, it was on that same door. And it was a, uh, we were all just blown away. This, this dent was a mile high, 
it was like it was pregnant the guy that won the whole competition really and it was like what the hell's going on here you know interesting and i had some guys saying hey good job you i think you got it you know just happened to be on that same door and yeah and uh and it was twice as hard a dent than everybody else had too and i was yeah. i was pretty confident with it yeah and uh anyway long story short um i back then they they listed all the places i got like 18th place I was, I was so, I like, was young out of how many people out of, there was probably like 25 guys or something. <clears throat> yeah. So you know? you, yeah. And, and I was like at the bottom, at the bottom, you know, and, and, and honestly, you know, a lot of guys were telling me that it was a great dent and I, I actually felt really good about yeah. it. Yeah. And then here, this guy that won it was, you know, monster high. And you're looking and with like, your eyes, not I'm the like, machine. And you're like, like hmm. yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, the problem was with the machine was they couldn't put mine flat because the door handle was raised. So I, I was watching them do it. And I'm like, what are they going to do? And they were like using fingers and different things. And they were trying to hold it flat because they were up further. Oh, they weren't dear. flat on the panel. I didn't stand a chance anyway. Make long story short. Interesting. But I was a younger man then. And I my butt feelings were hurt. I mean, I was just, I was just upset. You know, I didn't go back for like, I want to say like seven or eight years. To like, the Mobile Tech Expo or to no, the Dan Olympics? Yeah, to, to, to the whole you thing. You didn't even go back. Like, You're like, no, boycott. No, <laughs> nope, nope, boycotting it. Cancel. You know, like, what an idiot. I mean, I I, I, w I did myself an, an injustice there. But I was like, you know, I can't believe this. And and yeah. I'm just so unfair. And and today I'd probably just laugh it off. But back yeah. then I, I thought I had something to prove. And then I told myself over the next eight years before I didn't go that I had nothing to prove. And then my good buddy, Bill Hewlett said, uh, Donnie, will you help me? He owned Pro Pete Air Solutions. Yeah. And he had made uh, made all those all those uh, lights and all that stuff. And he was a, a friend and in town here. And and uh, my whole my whole shop's full of pro PDR. You know, I just yeah. just uh, that's just who it was. He'd yeah. he'd bring them to us, and we would do you know real world testing on it. And we'd yeah, yeah. say, hey, you know this this this, and he would go back and change things. And and sometimes it was perfect because Bill was just brilliant. Good. And uh, but anyway, long story short. Um, I just didn't go back and that was foolish. And finally he said, come back and help me in my booth, would you? You know, let more about these lights than anybody. So I'd be honored, Bill. And I went back and I had the time of my life. Started really making good friends with people. And, you know, it was probably 10, 12 years ago or something like that. And yeah. And, uh, so this is, that's like, those are huge moments in people's lives. We all have these like, you know, turning points in our lives and things like that. Right. And that's like how, how you take adversity and use it to your advantage. Is there any way when you look back now, you say like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Is there, during that eight year span, did you have like the biggest fire under your ass to like be the best, right? Was that, was that like maybe a benefit that came from getting knocked down like that or anything? Cause you like, well, you said you didn't have anything to prove, but when you left there, you're like, you're like, I know I'm a better dent guy than that guy that won the thing. The 18th place. And I'm going to go prove it. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm better dent guy than the 18th place. Just by looking with my own two eyes, I'm not going to listen to what this machine thing says. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to prove that. Is there a little bit of that? If you can see. You know, it I, I no? guess, I guess that's really a hard question. I mm -hmm. just really did feel like a little bit of what you said there. I just said, yeah. I, I don't even know why, I, you know, tried to, I don't have anything to prove. And here I got, you know, stung in the, yeah. stung in the rear end and, and, you know, nobody knew me anyway. So it didn't really matter. It was more <laughs> of a pride thing, you know, yeah, for sure. it's like asking the cute girl out and everybody, all your friends know. And she's in says, front of everybody. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Shit. For sure. So I think I was just, uh, you know, I was young and, and you know now I, I big I learning experience though big learning huge experience. huge 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 mm -hmm. huge but but that's again why I haven't ever done the Dempt Olympics since yeah yeah for sure you're gonna have to go <laughs> back and do it one of these days just I might have to I might have just for your own personal benefit yeah um yeah. people used to hide stuff like crazy back in the early 90s my dad was actually not one of those people for whatever reason I think because he knew and the other guys should have known this but he always told me he knew how hard it was so that he would he would always show people like for now like now customers in my garage gms in the garage or gms out there looking at me fix dance whatever i'm like explaining everything i do telling them showing them making myself the expert all that stuff right sure but other guys in our area the guy that started right about the same time as my dad in sacramento um he would literally like put a sheet up hide behind the sheet and if someone would come wow. and watch him he just he would stop working and just who was that story. guy um, i'm pretty sure his name is jim hapgood Okay, I don't pretty know sure okay. uh, with uh, I think it was Denton Magic when he started. I don't know what it was when he okay. started, but like way back in the day. Um, I okay. and I think 
I don't know if I should say this if I'm wrong, but it's okay. I, this is a caveat. I might not be right, but I'm pretty sure he trained Keith Cosentino. Think. Okay. Oh, okay. Because Keith's right. in my area too. Okay. Um, and he trained a lot of guys in the area, that guy. And I think Dent Magic guy and my dad trained a lot of guys in the area. Coming up 90s, it, oh, that's happened to a lot of people. Sure, training a lot of sure, people. Now they're sure. all different businesses. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think, yeah. so yeah, he's been around for a long time. But when he, I don't know when he first started or for how long, but he, uh, you know, he, he would hide literally hide not share anything yeah. i mean shit yeah you right. couldn't you know that's i think that's why my dad was so sold on the dent pro franchise thing because so many other people were like not getting any info you can't like there's no other dent guys that you could talk to because like facebook sure. wasn't a thing you gotta remember right facebook oh, podcast yeah. none of that shit like you could <laughs> you could call people on their phone True. if you could find their yeah. number somehow yeah. because there's no websites remember this is like I, way back I when do. I like, do. yeah i'm talking to like the listeners right like oh yeah just mm. call other dent guys no didn't yeah. like you could talk to the dent guys in your area in your drivable area or you didn't talk to them right and now that's completely changing Right. It's, it's great. Podcasts, I think just Facebook in the last groups. five, six years, really, oh, yeah. it's been a great shift yeah. in the, in the culture. I love yeah. it. And that leads into really what you are trying to do with your partner, uh, Dave Strain. I think John Vidic too, is he partnered in the. Yeah, he, he, he's going to be uh, on our, on our podcast, but he's not in this, okay. in this gotcha. deal. No, 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 he's just like the, the, the resident Dent Olympics champion over and over. He is, he is, he okay. is, he is. He's amazing. He's <laughs> amazing. And so he's a good guy. He's super funny. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, is just a great, great guy. We, we, uh, we definitely wanted him in and he just, um, he's just got so many irons in the fire being a oh, young man, having nice. young kids and, yeah, I feel and all that stuff. So uh, sooner uh, or later we'll get him. We'll get him. Yeah. So, you know, leading into that, like sharing what we know. I mean, I, I do that as much as I can. And now I'm doing it in a coaching thing, like systematically sharing it. Like I have a program to where I can take you from point A to point B, right. Instead of yep. just talking, it's good. Like Matt Moore, you can call Matt Moore. He'll, he'll answer the phone, right. Uh, Dave Stream will talk to the phone when he answers his phone, right. He'll talk to you. Right. Um, all these people, you have access to them, right. You but bet. like, and Happy that's great help. and it's sharing and you call Don, I've called you and, and yep. we've chatted yep. and stuff. Um, so the sharing is great. I'm organizing it in one way. <clears throat> you and Dave are organizing it in another way. You called it the Dream Expo, um, which I fucking love acronyms, acronyms. And I saw that and I was like, God, that's so good. It's called, it means uh, Dent Repair Expo and more. Yes. Which is awesome. Um, so there's your segue. Tell everybody who hasn't heard of it. Because I talked to somebody yesterday. I'm like, you heard of the Dream Expo, right? And he's like, no. I'm like, what? How'd you know? Hear you know, we thing? just really came out with it a few weeks back. And yeah. and, uh, yeah. and uh, we've been working on it for a year plus, okay, but yeah. uh, we just started really mentioning it. And yeah. it, there's a little bit of disconnect. But, you know, going to uh, MT, which we all love, there's going to yeah. be no replacement of that. Mm -hmm. Um, that is my funnest high five. Yeah. Uh, let's, you know, let's have a beer. Let's, uh, you know, get all the hugs in and all the good yeah. stuff. And, and the camaraderie is just amazing. It's really great to see how it's changed too. Cause there's a few short 10 years ago, you'd be looking at a tool and someone just rip it right out of your hand and you'd be like, what the hell? And you, you know, guys would be walking around with their chest out and, you know, you know, this type of thing. And, and now it's like, Hey man, check this tool out, you know? And, yeah. You know, and you'd all talk together, and this is what I do, and this is what I do, yeah. and, and the and the changing of the guard has been so important. You know, it, and that's so important and for yeah, any industry in sharing and talking about the Absolutely. differences and the and the similarities. It's, I'm glad to see that it's and it's from guys. You know, it's a from guys like from you and the previous podcast and Mike's and, and Keith and Shane and all those guys like sharing. Yeah, absolutely, as as they, they all, all everyone has their own little hand in it. For you sure. bet, you bet, and it's just all about lifting the whole industry up because yeah. really. How many are there? And that goes back to the conversations that Dave and I were having. You'd be at MTE and there'd be like 3,000 people there, if right? That, yeah. you know, I think the Half best, of them are detailers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially them. the last, you know, they used to not be in until about probably four years ago. There was no detailers or anything okay. like that. Okay. It was mostly, mostly, um, uh, you know, just the, 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 the guys the dent guys, yeah. but I do love to see the changing of the guard and, and different yeah. stuff. Uh, Daniel Graham, good friend of mine, he keeps saying, I love going around and finding the little niches of other companies that aren't dent related in those businesses mm -hmm. where they can, you know, find the coolest new polish or yeah. Yeah. a better sandpaper or, you know, whatever might be that we can incorporate into our businesses, yeah, which is really sure. smart. And I really love that that guys are doing and they're adding, you know, clear bra and, and 
tinting and, and, yeah. and this ceramic coat is amazing. Another story for another time, but mm -hmm. um, some really great stuff. So basically in a, in the long run, I just think um, this, this dream expo is amazing because we were talking about the 3000 people, right? Yeah. And then we, we went to, of course, Vegas and there was about 1500. Mm -hmm. uh, small. I don't know the exact figures, but it was a lot slower, but what was weird was we noticed um, other than a couple of us regulars that, it was a whole different crowd on the West from, you know, like you said, you went, east, you yeah. went to, you went there, right? Cause it was closer. Yeah. To I was it. stoked. I was like, I don't have to yeah. fly across the country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So there was a lot, it was just a whole different crowd. It was kind of interesting. It's like, wow, you know, what, where all these guys come from? But what was interesting is we're only touching a little bit of the industry. And, and that was our talks about this. And, and uh, I hear your little guy there. Um, the uh, basically the, 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 the whole premise behind this is to reach more people. We, we, there's got to be 30, 40, you know, maybe 50,000 people in, and I was going to say Minnesota, in, uh, in the states that they're doing this. And yeah, that are running like naive. legitimate PDR companies. Yeah. Billing, yeah. you know, mid five figures or six figures, like real yeah. den companies, 40, 50,000 people. It's probably true. Exactly. Oh, wow. And we're still the most well kept secret. So we thought, still. what a better way because we're lifting each other up, right? Yeah. When we go to these things, but there's yeah. only 3,500 of us or yeah. 3,000 or whatever. Yeah. We need to start lifting the whole industry up. And this is really the flavor behind what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to lift the whole industry up as a whole. Um, there, we're going to have about 20 speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all going to drop uh, 15 minute speeches that are going to be amazing. Every single uh, guy has agreed to do um, a, like a 15 minute talk on something mm -hmm. that's going to minimally but ten thousand dollars extra in your pocket per year, up to fifty thousand. Uh, they're all going to be different talks. Um, this is going to be a thirty-five dollar entry fee until what is it? The price is increasing to seventy on March seventeenth, and then oh no, seventy. Ninety-nine. Yeah, seventy on March seventeenth, and then uh, ninety-nine uh, April seventeenth, the day of the show. So um, it'll so, still be so, okay. So twenty speakers. 15 minutes 15 for with sure but actionable, i think we'll have 20 okay actionable. actionable items that will change your business between 10 and fifty thousand dollars yep so if you pay for a hundred dollar have... ticket thirty five hundred dollar ticket go there yep. and implement one one, one speaker's thing. plan You're like i don't like these other 14 the yeah. ideas i don't want to do I have one speaker's plan right you'll grow your business yep grow your business just That's trying nice. to bring it all up yep. what we all know at the end of the day um, Dave and I have talked about this so many times and a lot of guys that are brick and mortar. Yeah. We have to get more brick and mortar. Um, it, it's really interesting how um, it's great to, to have be any, anywhere in the industry. There's nothing wrong with it. I've done it all, but it's really interesting when you have a, especially like hail or, and now we're starting to do everything uh, insurance wise or sending tons yep. of stuff mm -hmm. to us, you know, and uh, it's amazing when they walk into a shop, how I can see the differences, you know, I could be at a body shop and I'm going to fight like hell with that adjuster to get what I want. And then that same adjuster a year later comes to my shop and says, uh, Oh, weren't you working out of the back of your car, you know, and doing that? We were, I remember arguing about that, that vehicle. I said, no, no, I've always had a shop. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where that car came to for me to fix it. And the guy's was like, what? And it's just the total change of the guard in the adjuster's mind. Now, all of a sudden, he thought we were making too much money because let's just face it. That's what they think. They yeah. think we all make too much money. Dude and pulls you know up what? in the back of a you know SUV or truck or whatever and pulls his tools out and he's making money. What? What? Right. That doesn't and make sense. I, and you put a shop just, on it. They're like, okay, that's they're, loud. They're just jealous, but they don't understand the hard work that all of us have done. Exactly you know, right. they're totally belittling all of the things that we've done and and how we've gotten to where we are and to be as clean and, and repair they don't, people. They don't and, remember it took you three days to make 200 bucks on a, on a Le Sabre right. door. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting. And, and there, and, and it seems like we get it, you know, I mean, we had, uh, year before last, we had uh, Paul and Tim Corden and and uh, Clifton and and Ray and and uh, we had an all star cast at, nice. the, yeah, at the shop. Damn. It was great. It was amazing. That's awesome. And we were we we just we just really worked at you know the 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 whole guard. You know, Randy Hobson was the the uh, we got brought Randy in. He was doing he was pushing at the time and 
he was running the show and, and it worked out great and I could push more and, and uh, we just had a great team. We call it the dream team. Also dream team 19. I call it like that. Here we are using (laughs) dream again. That was all Dave though. I got to say Dave, Dave came up with the acronym. Oh, you know, yeah. Dave is marketing. He's he's just, he's just, he he absolutely is. And, and what he's going to bring to the table is just amazing in its own right. So please go buy a ticket from now. Yeah, yes. that'll be great. That'll be great. We were talking about that. That's perfect. Yeah. Go, and, uh, what, so real quick, we'll come back to it at the end, but where, yeah. where can we buy, where can we buy a ticket? So please go to dentrepair.com. Easiest thing in the world. Dentrepair.com. The URL, best, right? uh, they're the best, uh, it's, it's one of the best sites there is. And they get yeah. 28,000 hits a month on, on dentrepair.com. Yeah, it's absolutely just crazy. The fact that people type it in and go to it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and it could be for body shops and paint and stand, just everything. Just, yeah. That's awesome. You got a dent, you know, dentrepair.com. So Great it's an URL. easy one. Leave it to leave it to Dave or you, I don't know, to have that URL. We all know that he's the URL guy. We see him posting like, oh, I'm selling 10 URLs. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. He's always yeah. selling 10 URLs. <laughs> like, he's yeah. It was so funny when when David and I started talking about URLs, I go, yeah. I got like 100, er, no, I have 280. I think I'm down to 240. And he goes, <laughs> down. that's what I got. And I'm like, yeah. what? And we pulled, pulled it up on GoDaddy. We're laughing. That's We're awesome. living parallel lives, you know? So. Okay, so real, more on the Dream Expo. So is it just really like 20, 15 minute speeches like in a platform where you can watch it over a 30 day period, right? You can watch it. Yes, we're, it's yeah. not like so it'll be live. live. Yeah, it it'll will be, be live, live the first day. The first day it'll be live. Gotcha. Uh, and then, but they'll be there and queued up for uh, 30 days. So you can kind of take your time Perfect. because we're really hoping what's going to really happen there is that'll be, um, and I know it will be, um, an incredible draw for all the techs out there. Yeah. You know, if you hear about it, it'd be the it'd be the worst decision of your life not to buy a thirty five dollar ticket. We're yeah. going to over deliver this thing like you can't believe. Yeah. We're going to have the best um, tool manufacturers involved with this. You'll be able to bounce in and out of their booths. Uh, it'll be really great for the tool manufacturers because they're virtual it'll, booths. They're virtual booths, cool, exactly. Cool. So okay. you can click on. They can have as many videos as they want. You can click on a tool, see it actually working, mm-hmm. and different things, and then just hop right over to the booth and do a live one-on-one with someone if you want to. Nice. Uh, talk about the tool a little bit more. Um, they'll direct you right to where to buy it and everything else, and that'll be super sweet. And it's really neat because we'll have you know you can have like you know, 16, 30 guys talking in a room together. If you want to, I mean, if you, if I see you Corey in there and I'm like, dude, we haven't talked for a while. Hey, bounce over here. We've got rooms where you guys can go bullshit, you know, just go talk together and, and have lunch and, and whatever you want to do. Um, we're going to have in the evening, John Vadine is going to the Dent Reaper guy is going to be the virtual bartender. We're going to have a drinking room after hours. So you got to, you got to make your own beer, you know, or, or cocktail, but it's going to be just amazing. And the, the camaraderie with it all and everything else, I really want to just blow up the tool vendors because there's so many guys that we don't understand that there's about 5% of us that are actually on social media. Yeah, that's crazy. And it's so sad. And that information comes from tool companies, right? Because they basically say like how many guys they see on social media versus how many contacts they have that they shipped tools to. Exactly. And they're like 5% of people are paying attention. (laughs) Exactly. It's It's amazing. It's, 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 it's kind of mind bending. It really really, is. You know, and it kind of goes back to that 3,500 people that are going to MTE. You know, it's probably the 5% of us or whatever, (laughs) you know. (laughs) But what's really cool is MTE. People are thinking, oh, are you doing something against MTE or whatever? And it's like, no, 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 no. MTE is, uh, is, is you know, is never going to, we're never going to have an in-person thing. You know, yeah. we'll never, ever do that. I love Kevin. He's great. Yeah. And Sheldon. And it's just, we'll never do that. We're just trying to get it out to more people that can't afford to come. You know, there's so That's many the people. Thing. It's expensive, dude. Like it's it an opportunity cost of leaving work. Yep. It's flying across the country or halfway or whatever. Yep. Um, the ticket's not that expensive to get to inside yep. the tech expo, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like a few days away, thousand, 2000 bucks, you know, probably yeah, a $500 bucks bar tonight tab. Tonight at the nice hotel, you know, to, for, for just one night and people yeah. usually spend three, four nights mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know, all those things. Yeah. And, and it does add up and then you got to ship your tools back. Cause usually you're not going to walk on with a bunch of muddled bent rods under the plane. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so this you know, is there's in a lot addition of addition to, 
Yeah, that's exactly. Awesome. So it's just, and it's not going to be, you know, it's just one of those things where we just want to bring, bring everybody up and we're really having fun with it too. We're getting uh, some body shop magazines involved, like Fender Bender. We're going to have a, nice. an article in there and we're, we're going after, I'm going after Votex and different body shops and uh, just kind of trying to bring it up and, and, and just try to get a whole bunch more people in the room that were ever even there. I mean, we got people that bought from Czechoslovakia yeah. and, you know, obviously Italy and through the UK and, and uh, you know, there's, there's guys that would never ever get on a plane to come here for three days because they physically couldn't oh, afford to do oh, so, insane, you know, yeah, for sure. So if we can introduce them to the better pushing tools to, to come full circle and talk about what, what we were, what we're doing with and how these guys get so good, so fast, so quickly mm -hmm. and become a five-year tech in six months time, that's what we need because it doesn't do any of us any justice. And I hate this. People think I'm crazy when someone comes to me and says, Hey, there's a really great guy across town, man. He's doing really good work. They're thinking that you're going to bum me out. And Don, he, he's removing dents really well. Number. I'm like, that's fantastic. You know, yeah, and they're like, number. what isn't he your competition? I'm like, no, we have, you know, 5.4 million people in Minnesota yeah. and everybody's got two point some odd cars. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You know, there's like 30 guys in, in the state that are doing it. And, and, and no, I'm, I'm excited to hear you say that because what happens is if you haven't heard of it anyway, we, we all know two out of 10 people have heard of it. We've got such growth here in this business. I've heard you say it on one of your podcasts, Corey was, Hey, we've got, uh, you know, we've got nothing but to go up. You know, mm -hmm. this is, we got to get this, you know, industry and we, we want good guys in it. We want educated guys. We want them making the right decisions. We want to help them get to that level quicker, faster, and be a cleaner tack. And I just hate it when someone says, I, I saw that done one time. Oh man, it looked like a sack of potatoes. I, uh, and then they're, you know what they're doing? They're telling all their friends, oh, don't do that paintless stairway. Well, that doesn't work. Man, you should have yeah. seen the ugly den he did. So I'd rather have us all helping each other, bringing everyone up to the level that they need to be at, and get them advancement and just get more and more brick and mortars and more help in all the body shops and all the different, uh, you know, genres that, that need it. So we need to bring the body shop into this category as well. And we see that too. I guys are paying attention with Kiko and, yep. um, Randy just joined. Great one. company. Um, can't got Cam Otto Cam doing Otto, some big stuff. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Taking their products into the body shop, Mary, like, making the marriage between like what we've been doing over here in the PDR space yeah. to the body shop. Like body guys should be glue pulling period. Like yeah. it doesn't make sense that they, that they don't start and rough out these big dents with glue tabs instead of welding absolutely. a tab, welding a friggin' metal rod to it. Like it makes no yeah, sense. Absolutely. Like I could literally do that with a glue pole. Right. Like, why, yeah. why, why are you just completely destroying the paint and having to grind holes it, like grind, you know, it why doesn't do make sense. Doesn't I mean, one of my, yeah. One of my biggest complaints, and I know you've been there too, Corey, yeah. <laughs> is you get called into a body shop and they give you a golf ball size dent yeah. on a door and you look to the left, that guy's in that stall and that guy's in that stall and it's a dent through a body line or right. whatever. And you're like, I could fix all three of these jobs. Why don't you guys, you know, yeah, you get it. Go and home. They're, yeah. and they're yeah. grinding it off and you're like, you're painting that Mercedes, the whole side of that car. Like, yeah. what are you doing? I mean, shit, I've been called out to fix the right rear door of the thing. And they're like fixing the quarter panel. I'm like, I, yeah. Do you want me to fix the quarter panel too? Yeah. Or no, yeah. Like, no, just the door. I'm like, okay. Okay. Like, I don't want to take the, you know, I don't want to take the work from their guys. Right. Like they rightfully sold the job and got the job. Great. Exactly. But like we need as an industry to bring that car to us first before it goes to the body shop. Um, so that it doesn't have to go through that process. That's, that's, yeah. that's it's, the big goal. It's an absolute shame because most people have that thousand dollar deductible. Yeah. So let's say they're two $500 dance are getting both of those done. And we yeah. both know that, in a body shop, that's two different hits. Now those yeah. things didn't happen at the same time, you know, unless it was a side stripe and then that yeah. creases are attached or something, but you know, it's like, no, no, no. So it's just amazing to me how, how much cleaner. And of course we'd breathe this every day, but for the younger guys, you know, we're just a cleaner repair. Yeah. They're not making that insurance claim. Their rates are not going up. Their car's not tagged with a car fax. They're not renting a vehicle. Their the car is depreciated it. when they try to go sell it. You know, it's like, and all that stuff, all those benefits. And yeah. we do it like, uh, in 20% of the time it takes or 10% yeah, yeah. of the time. It's it not there much. for two weeks. Right. And then of course you go to sell a car and if a guy's kind of halfway savvy, he's like, well, why was that whole right of the side of the car? Yeah. Well, there's just a door ding in the right rear door and they go, Oh, is that, 
after you wrapped around the telephone pole, <laughs> yeah. you know, why would yeah. you paint the whole side of a car for a door ding? People don't get it just like they don't understand paintless yeah. tent removal. You, you we know have there's something to elevate here. You know, there's opportunity when, when you look at something and it doesn't make sense, right? Cause if I could, if I got to talk to every customer, every person in the U S one-on-one -on -one for 10 minutes, there's not a single person that would choose body shop over PDR unless the PDR guy couldn't do it. Not a single person. It doesn't, it literally Absolutely. doesn't make sense. Right. Absolutely. Like we're faster, better, cheaper, better for the car. Like all the, like, there's no reason to, unless a PDR guy can't do Zero. it. So there's that Zero. info. And then there's the info of like, but 90% of people take their car to a body shop and don't think PDR first, that right. gap yeah. right there is it's crazy. all opportunity. Right. It's, it's us, crazy. Opportunity. Yeah. It's like yeah, we're in the absolutely. beginning stages of an industry, in my opinion, that is just started. It's just going to explode. It's like, it's like people doubt it. Like, oh, PDR is this, right? Yeah. When, when computers came out and they filled up entire rooms and they cost a ton of money to run off electricity and stuff, people are like, that's not going to work. Right. Like that, right. They, how is that ever going to work? And now like I got one on my, on my watch, on my wrist yeah. here, in my, yeah. in my pocket, in my computer, in my, like it's yeah. everywhere. Right. They and say your phone internet, has got more capabilities than the three rooms that had that sent the first man to the moon. Exactly. Like, exactly. That computer, Unbelievable, know, like, right? What? You know, the internet, crazy. right? My dad got the internet early on in his business and he was like, this is never going to work. Like, this is not going to happen because it takes so long to download, like dial up, right? Like dial up, like, it's them. never going to work, right? Yeah. Same thing with PDR. There's guys out there yeah. saying like, yeah, like it's good. Like I get it. It's a little niche, but it's never going to, no, it's it, when they're there's so that wrong. much opportunity, there's so, so much wrong. more room to grow. You know, what's amazing to body shops and this is why they really, and this is why I'm reaching out to so many and we're trying yeah. to get it, you know, do all these articles with, and that's going to continue even past this uh, point of uh, the dream deal. We just need to, we're, it's our mission, Dave and I's mission to get into all the body shops for everyone across America for the simple reason that, and I know you've had this happen, Corey. Um, you know, uh, I, you, you go and you, and you have a guy come in and, and, and they say, oh, a friend of mine told you about whatever and you, and you do the dent and they they're, they get it first time and they're happy, ecstatic. And they say, that's when the conversation really begins sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause they're just kind of like, Hmm. And then they say, you know, I got an estimate two years ago for $1,200 to fix this dent. You just did it for 200 bucks. I just went to lunch. I just came back. I am blown away. Uh, I can't even believe this. And if that body shop would have simply said, you know, we can get this done for you uh, over a lunch hour. I would have gotten it done two years ago. I would have felt better about my car. My, my payment's the same. I have an $800 a month car payment on my Mercedes. And this has driv driven me crazy for two years. My stress level would have been better. I swear to God, I would have paid $400 and yeah. I didn't want to paint my car. And, but unfortunately, paid, paid the more body shops, than I yes, <laughs> the body shops are losing these customers. And I got to tell you, 50% of the time people are telling us that story. Like, you know, they just lost that customer because they wanted, they wanted to paint three panels. They're, it's like, no, I, I'd rather live with my dent. If they had an alternative, they would have fixed it a month, two months, three years earlier. And it's, it's really sad, you know, that we're this well kept secret. that's on us as an industry to make that known to people. That's not the Absolutely. body shop. It's not the body shop's responsibility or the customer's responsibility to hear about us or anything that's on us. And that's why I'm doing my, ver my I'm trying to do that in my way. You guys are trying to do that in a much bigger, <laughs> which is fantastic, bigger way with the dream expo. The more people that do their part to spread the word and show yeah. people what PDR is and why it's beneficial and why people need it and why it's a necessary yeah. skill to have in the marketplace for yeah. automobiles. Like that's, yeah. that's exactly. what we need to do. And that's the thing that's awesome. The only thing I disagree in is it's, it is the body shops problem too. We need to get them involved more. Okay. They need to really, you know, I believe they need to, to really maybe get a guy in house or whatever it might sure. be, mm -hmm. but they, it's part of their duty too, because think about how many cars they're missing out on. You know, they probably, I, yeah. we get all these stories from these people and they say, God, if, if they just would have told me yeah. that, you know, they could use us, you know, or, or they drop it off next week. I have a guy that comes in or we do that here, an option for them because most people aren't going to paint the side of their car for a small ding or dent. Right. I can see, I see what you're it. saying. I was running it through a different filter in my head. I'm yeah. like, you know, yeah. that's not their problem, but I do agree with you. If like, if they're, if the point of their, the purpose of their industry yeah. is to 
repair the customer's car with the best possible method, yeah. then they should be using PDR somehow, whether it's absolutely, whether it's farming out to vendors um, or having an in-house guy or something like that. Um, I think, yeah, you're, you're spot on. I think the sure. disconnect is, is like, if I went to a body shop like that yeah, and they said, uh, you know what, you don't need this painted. Um, I think we can make this thing look fantastic for you. Uh, we've got a guy or we do it in house or whatever, and it's going to be 200 bucks. Well, next time I get in a car accident, I'm going to say yeah. that body shop. Did, oh did my right. God. Did me right. yeah. He did me right. I trust him now. He could have taken my money, but he didn't. He did the right thing. He's got ethics. I want to use this guy, you know, For sure. and yeah. you know, I, I see it. I, I believe that. I don't yeah. know about in-house PDR guys. I think they should have them. I, I don't know. I think, I think maybe 10 years from now when there's that many guys and that yeah. many good technicians that people sure. will be willing. Cause you're going to, you're going to have to go work for less money. Like you are. The, absolutely mo more than likely absolutely. you're not going to yep. you know make no. mid mid to high six figures no which no, you can no, no. on your own business but you it's can. another option for for guys to go and i think you know i just don't think there's enough i don't think there's enough people now where if like someone came to me and they're like hey you can come work for at the caliber shop yeah. body shop I'm like, eh, but a new a new guy that's a struggling new guy to take my dealerships yeah. and to take mm -hmm. my spot my ranking on on uh, google exactly. and to take like and he's like i can make you know 70 grand or flat rate or whatever they can i get do. my because there's a lot Benefits of guys out there yeah exactly yeah. a lot of guys that are more <laughs> secure like that and yep. they don't want to take that chance of maybe mm -hmm. you know um uh and i and i hate that but they but you're right it'd yep. probably be a short-lived thing you know they might be the guy that that um, wants security and yep. you know, for his family, he's got young kids, whatever, and he needs that insurance and the 401k and all that. But then after, you know, after three, four good. years, he's yeah. like, I'm billing out this and I'm getting paid that. that uh, I mean, bye -bye. I mean, my <laughs> dad does. can tell you it the does. story of 10 different guys over the last, mm -hmm. you know, 20, 30 years. Or and I can too. 25 different guys, yeah. honestly, that did that exact same thing. So I'm curious to see if it'll last right in the yeah. body shop. Yeah. Like a, yeah. a, a PDR technician that, is that good at can fix anything that someone brings to a body shop, like is going to have to get paid pretty well in order to stay there long-term. They are, they are. So and probably the I, way to go probably is more, more than of the a manager. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that, that'll be interesting to see how that works. So, so really what has to happen there is I think there has to be some kind of a, you know, in this United thing with all of us getting together and bringing everybody up is amazing. Right. But maybe what has to happen is you just have to say to that body shop, you have to say, Hey, um, it can be under your moniker. It can be this, it can be that. And you get, if you're really good at it, set up five body shots for yourself. It's your own business. You yeah. say, Hey, I'm not gonna, you can charge it out under yours, but this is my prices. And, and that's the way it is. And, you know, and, and why lose that? Maybe this is a whole different, yeah. um, terminology. And we've been talking about this, Dave and I, Oh, there's, um, a, there's a theory too, just, with like, insurance companies having like car insurance companies have their like quick repair or no, excuse me, medical insurance have their like dock in the box or the med sevens or whatever you call them. They're quick in and out. Like you don't need to go stay in the ICU hospital quick in and out. Right. There's talks. I've talked to a couple people in the industry thinking that, you know, the car automobile insurance are going to have their quick repair centers, which would be more PDR yep. related. Yep. So yep. there's, nope, right. who knows how it goes, but it's, on it's yeah. our, our opportunity, you, me and you talking, you and Dave talking, Dave and whoever talking about trying to guide it and make right. sure that it benefits us as an industry and benefits all the people coming behind us. Right. right? So that it's, we don't get stuck in like working $20 an hour jobs at body shops. We don't want that either. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's like, no, we just don't, balance, we yeah. just don't, you know, it's uh, you know what I think that our most important um thing is, is I just had a, a big tech get together at the shop yeah. uh, about three weeks ago and we had 31 guys show up and it was just an incredible uh, talk back and forth. And the real disconnect with us as technicians is we're all over the board. Uh, you know, I just basically asked everyone kind of had little individual talks and stuff and Hey, you know, what do you, what do you charge you know, uh, for a dime size down? Oh, I do 80, I do 60. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're like, what? <laughs> you charge what? You know, and, uh, you know, mobile tech RX is 15450, and it shouldn't be any less than that. You, you deserve that. And, and people just don't get it mm -hmm. and they don't factor in all the incredible, um, things that go along with that right we have to bring everybody up and and stop for a minute and and this one guy that said 80 i think i told you this on the phone and it was really interesting i said hey um you've got um 
You got an eighty dollar deal. Where was that? Oh, I did it in the guy's garage. You know, he, he got a heated garage. Oh, okay. How long did it take you to get there? Oh, a half hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's quick. And uh, I just can't. I just can't charge more than you know eighty dollars for a ten a dime size stand. I just can't do it. it. Took me ten minutes. Okay. Well, well, let's 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 just factor in some stuff here. So you got a half hour each way. You you, you got to unload your tools. Your tools are cold because we're cold here. <laughs> they got to get you know they got to get you know even though it's a heated garage, you probably got to heat the panel up a little bit. You got this and that or thing. You got to talk to the customer. You have to sell that. You feel the um, phone. Hey, how did you get the customer? Yeah, you know, exactly. did you have a Google ad? Did you have Facebook ad? Did you have? Do you have insurance on your business? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you burn a little fuel going there? Mm -hmm. You know, and all this stuff. And I had this one guy, and he was it was hilarious. You know, you start talking about all the all the numbers that went involved with that repair, and and you know, when you first started ten years ago, this guy was ten years in. Um, how long did it take you to do that done? Yeah. Like got two hours, man. Yeah. And I go, all right, so you're discounting yourself there a little bit. And you got all these other factors in there too. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's think about this a little bit harder. Um, do you believe that that was worth $80? And the guy was looking through me, like looking at the refrigerator behind me or in the, in the, in the break room. And I could see he got it. And he was like, Oh, my God, he said, I should be charging $300 for that $154, <laughs> bench, shouldn't I? And I said, exactly, buddy. Now you're getting it, yeah. you know, and the value you just did. Now, $154 is not a lot of money for that guy. And a lot of times, if you tell someone $80, $60, $80 on a Mercedes, thanks anyway, man. I don't want you touching my car. That's yeah. not even enough money. Now you tell them 154 Now, now that one is going to sting a little bit, you know, or 200 or 300. Now you're worth it. Now you're worth more to me with those, that feeling mm -hmm. of, 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 of those kind of numbers. So that makes sense now. So yes, I want to, I want to do that, but think about his deductibles, 500, a thousand, what the hell is 15450, right? Yeah. But the whole thing is, and why I went through it was if you get three guys, one guy says 60, one guy says 80, one guy says a hundred, one guy says 154, one guy says 200. We are not a unified industry. We are not, we look like a joke. We look like we're, you know, in Tijuana and we're bidding on a blanket, you know, for, for, you know, and I bought it for four bucks and you paid 20 and we get back to the hotel and we're having a margarita. I, like, I got it for four bucks. You know, this fun. is not who we are guys. We're not cheap. We're good. We're, we earned it. We are, are a very respectable career. We're all artisans, I believe. And we're doing amazing work and we didn't get there overnight. So we all have to just lift each other up and believe in ourselves and get to that next level and get unified. And everybody listening needs to go out and get mobile tech RX. It's 65 bucks a month. It's cheap and you will pay for it. The very first dent you do promise you that. Absolutely. It'll make you more, you know, just make you more dollars just right away overnight. I mean, I remember walking outside, you know, guy'd have a Mercedes wearing the Rolex, you know, and, You'd walk off before I even stepped off the curb. Not that I was in a hurry, but I'd say that's gonna be like 300 bucks. And the guy's like, looks at his car and looks at his watch. And he's like, you just profiled me. I bet if this was a, you can see what he didn't say it, but he wants to say it. You know, if I had a Yugo or, or a, you know, a Chevrolet, you, you it would be $200 or a hundred dollars. And, and it's like, you know, now I just love saying to the guy that same exact dent, you know, I don't know. Let me go grab my tablet. Go in, scan the VIN. You look so professional. You're measuring it out. You're saying, hey, this is four inches, you know, but let's put in three. You see how it goes through the body line? I got to click this. And I always do it over the shoulder. I made more money when I went from my phone to a big iPad tablet because they could see everything I'm doing. Now that same $300 dent is $540. And they're like, wow, I didn't expect it to be that much, but when can you get me in? You know, it was, it wasn't me. I, I wasn't making the sale mobile tech rx was just amazing just get a hold of eric over there and and buy into that program most incredible tool i own not much else to say after that man that was no. <laughs> that last few minutes that was great that was it i appreciate you yeah. coming on man uh go to dentrepair.com uh check out the dream expo um and you know follow uh follow don when he's talking about it online things like that Awesome. appreciate you guys i appreciate Coming you Corey. Up. i just love watching you and 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 bringing everybody up and everybody needs to be a little bit more like Corey. get a little Corey <laughs> in your life i appreciate it man yeah thanks it's all good man thanks Talk for yep yeah, dentrepair.com go check it out guys go buy a ticket today thank you Talk soon.